Hello everybody, thanks for tuning in to today's video. We're doing the month head forecast today. Uh, we're going to have a look at the possible weather uh, for, for September in the British Isles. Now before I get on with the video, I just want to talk about the advertising. There will usually be a video ad overlaying my web videos at gadsworthvids.com. Please play those videos, you'll be supporting gadsworthvids.com. Uh, by doing that. Now we're using the charts from the Beijing Climate Centre for this video. You can find the Beijing Climate Centre uh, on my links page. Just click on the links tab at the top of the page. Uh, go through the links page, you'll see the link for the Beijing Climate Centre. Click on that and you can see these charts for yourself at the Beijing Climate Centre. They do both monthly and seasonal forecasts. It's an excellent site, very, very useful and informative. Now, before I get on with the video, I just want to uh, quickly talk about last month. The prediction uh, for August didn't go uh, very well at all, really. The prediction was for a cooler than average and a wetter than average month. Now, the rainfall wasn't too bad, actually. I think many of us away from the far south and southeast did see uh, slightly above average rainfall for August, and it was surprising because it started off on uh, quite a dry note. So rainfall wasn't too bad, uh, but wasn't uh, excellent. Uh, but for temperature, that was very poor. I said it was going to be a cooler uh, than average month. It wasn't. Uh, temperatures range from, uh, well, generally above normal to around uh, the seasonal average. But it certainly wasn't a particularly cool month. Uh, and uh, the model was wrong with that. And it was generally wrong with its 500 millibar height predictions. It predicted a lot of unsettled weather that didn't uh, really come off. And this is just a warning, really, uh, that uh, long range forecasting is extremely experimental. Don't take it seriously, just take it as a bit of fun. Uh, even month ahead forecasting is difficult enough without uh, getting to the minefield that is seasonal forecasting. I'm doing this uh, for fun and to try and uh, push for science, uh, but don't take it seriously at all. Um, because these months that go wrong, it just goes to show you that uh, we are talking about highly experimental uh, models and forecasts here. Uh, so I say don't take it too seriously. Right then, getting on with the prediction for September. Now I just want to explain what the Beijing Climate Centre is doing with this monthly forecast. We're breaking down uh, the period into a 10 day period. So this first chart we're looking at is the 500 millibar height anomaly chart uh, for the first uh, to the 10th of September. So we're breaking uh, it down into 10 day periods. This is the height anomaly chart uh, for the globe um, for the 1st to the 10th of September. And this is the area we want to focus on specifically around British Isles into the Atlantic and then over here in towards Europe we focus on that as well. So we're seeing a big large area of positive heights at 500 millibars here around the British Isles uh, for the first 10 days of September uh, being predicted by the Beijing Climate Centre. This looks like a very good prediction. Uh, we're under high pressure. We're going to be under high pressure for at least for next week. Uh, so this is already getting off to a very good start. I'm very pleased with this prediction. High pressure very much dominating around the west of Europe and in towards much of the continent as well through the first 10 days of uh, uh, September. Now going on to the next chart, this is the height anomaly chart for the next 10 day period. So this takes us from the 11th <coughs> to the 20th of September and what we're seeing here is a weaker signal for high pressure but high pressure uh, above average height still uh, to the northwest of the British Isles but maybe bringing up uh, slightly below average heights down uh, to the south. That could be extending in through much of uh, the western uh, <coughs> part of the Mediterranean and if we have a look uh, on this side of the chart, we see that extending into much of Europe as well. So up to the northwest of the British Isles, we've got these above average heights. Elsewhere, though, pressure is becoming weaker. So that probably implies uh, low pressure starting to track in uh, from the south through the middle part of the month. And then as we go into the final 10-day period, we have heights uh, uh, rebuilding here across much of central and northern Britain and up in towards uh, the North Atlantic as well, extending back into uh, Scandinavia also. So this is a big area of high pressure building or predicted to build across many parts of British Isles, generally to the North British Isles, but uh, covering much of British Isles uh, through the final 10 day period, the 21st to the 30th of September. Note that below average heights, weekly below average heights, but still below average heights uh, around Spain and Portugal and extending through in towards this central and southern part of the continent. 
So this implies again a uh, low pressure probably tracking through the continent uh, through the final 10 days of the month with high pressure building around the British Isles and extending up in towards uh, Scandinavia. So you have to say this is a, a signal for a very anti-cyclonic dominated month, really, uh, high pressure dominated September across much of the continent. And particularly for the British Isles, that's what we're concerned with, of course. Now, uh, this is the temperature prediction for the first 10 days of September, the 1st to the 10th of September. You see warmer than average temperatures being predicted for the British Isles. We're in these orange colours, so yes, warmer than average temperatures being predicted. Hardly surprising with high pressure dominating the weather. The temperatures go back more towards average as we get into the second period of the, of the month. So again, this is the 11th to the 20th of September. We see those temperatures falling back a bit. Uh, this is the scale here. The cream colours are around average. We've got the cream colours here across the British Isles. So yes, temperatures probably dip down a little bit around the middle of the month. Uh, that's as that uh, pressure pulls out to the west. Notice the above average temperatures are in to the northwest of the British Isles, that's the high pressure pulling out to the northwest, and we've got the low pressure feeding up from the south, if you remember. And then as we go through towards uh, the final 10 day period, the 21st to the 30th, uh, well we're in more or less average to slightly above average temperature anomalies here uh, across the British Isles, again this is scale, uh, we're in these creamy colours here, so yes temperatures are very much close to average for the 21st to the 30th of September. Precipitation anomalies for the first 10 days, the first of the 10th, uh, below average precipitation here for the British Isles. Hardly surprising with high pressure dominating uh, the scene. I think get a bit more uh, interesting for the second 10 day period, the 11th to the 20th, still more or less uh, above average out to the west of the British Isles. Um, but for British Isles itself, we're actually around average. And notice this very wet anomaly around Spain and Portugal extending through much of the uh, Mediterranean. Now, if, if you've read the, see, the month head forecast from Terry Scully, you'll know uh, that he is predicting for the middle of September low pressure could track through uh, central parts of the Mediterranean, uh, central parts of Europe I should say, and perhaps affecting the Mediterranean as well. Um, generally to the south of uh, the British Isles, and this actually is very close to what Terry is predicting, uh, funnily enough, uh, with a very wet signal here for many central parts of the Mediterranean, but for British Isles itself, uh, we're nearer normal. So that's actually a wetter signal than for the first 10 day period, and that's probably because this low pressure is feeding up from the south, at times, but it, the low pressure itself is more centred uh, to the south of the country, actually taking the heaviest of the rain through there. And then as we go through to the final 10 day period, the 21st to the 30th, high pressure is coming back in, if you remember, across uh, generally to the north of the British Isles. Um, so what we have here then is a signal for near normal uh, precipitation anomalies here for the final 10 day period, the 21st uh, to the 30th, uh, but above norm, uh, below normal precipitation to the north and to the west of the British Isles and to the south still that above normal uh, signal indicated below pressure perhaps still to the south of the country. So averaging it all out this is the 500 bit of our height anomaly for September the 1st to the 30th and it's very anti-cyclonic high pressure uh, above average heights here really dominate weather. Weaker signal the further south you go though so uh, maybe as we get towards Spain and France where the signal actually becomes slightly below average but for the British Isles itself we've got above average heights being forecast for much of the British Isles in September. Temperature anomalies for uh, September we're forecast to be above average, uh, a warmer than average month here being predicted uh, for the British Isles, the greatest signal is to the north, uh, the lesser, less above average temperatures but still generally above average is further to the south. Uh, precipitation anomalies, well it's drier than average here being predicted for the British Isles Again, the further south we go, probably we get nearer normal. So uh, cooler, wetter weather at times for southern areas, perhaps uh, for the month. But really, the month is forecast to be uh, drier and warmer than average across uh, the British Isles. Finally, having a quick look at October, this is CFS version 2. You remember last month, CFS was going for an anticyclonic September. That looks like a good prediction from CFS. So uh, uh, that does look quite good. It looks like we are going to have an anticyclonic September. But for October, uh, this is the uh, 700 mm of our height anomaly prediction from CFS. We see it's predicting high pressure around Scandinavia, low pressure 
pressure uh, out in the Atlantic, cutting underneath that high pressure perhaps. So this could be a signal for dry weather across much of the country, but if this uh, below average area here, the trough here in the Atlantic cuts underneath, that could turn into quite a wet signal. That's a long way off and we do need to be uh, careful about taking that too seriously. So, in summary, it looks as though the Beijing Climate Centre is forecasting heights to be above average for September. Uh, consequently, a warmer and drier than average month is predicted. And I think I'm going to go with this. I'm not going to amend this for uh, this month. I will amend it at times if I don't agree uh, with the uh, prediction. But I think this is a pretty good prediction from uh, the Beijing Climate Centre uh, for September. A warmer than drier than average month. I think it's a good prediction. So we'll see how it goes. We'll come back next month and see how, we, how it's developed. Uh, but that's the prediction for September. Warmer and drive an average month. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.